thousand love spending a beautiful weekend having fun in the great outdoors. You know, one of my favorite things is getting out there with some exciting hardware and choosing what size adventure I want to have. For example, you can go small or medium or large. There are so many vessels and vehicles to satisfy your inner adventure, but getting these beauties from point A to point B can prove to be a bit difficult. Luckily for me, my buddy Mike Monticello knows everything you need to know about towing. Jack! Hey, Mike. Right on time. Today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about towing. Mike asked me what size adventure I was up for. I went for the boat. How much do you think a boat and trailer like this weigh, Jack? I have no idea, about a ton? Actually, it's about 4,500 pounds, so over wow. two tons. Okay. Mike told me every truck has a tow rating, which is how many pounds a vehicle can tow behind it. A tow rating kind of consists of three basic main things, and the first one is the engine. How much power does it make? That's gonna help it tow a, a bigger trailer behind it. A vehicle with a big V8 is gonna usually be able to tow more than something with a four-cylinder or a V6. It also matters whether your vehicle is two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And the other thing is gear ratios. Whether your gearing is low or tall, and that's a scientific way of basically saying how efficient is it gonna be able to tow this truck? How well will it be able to access the engine's power? All right, almost. A little bit more. There you go. Great job backing up the truck, Mike. Now what? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the trailer down onto the hitch ball. Uh -huh. We also have to make sure that all of our, our chains are hooked up. We gotta lock this in, like so. Put in the safety pin. There's a lot of a lot of little safety things that you want to make sure you don't forget. Okay. Uh, we also put these safety chains on, and we always cross them because what we want to do is make sure that if the trailer were for some reason to come off, it would fall onto this cradle instead of falling down onto the road. Okay. And of course, we also have to hook up the trailer's electrical system because we want to make sure that brake lights, the tail lights, and the turn signals all work on the trailer in conjunction with the truck. Okay. And we also want to hook up this trailer safety brake because just in case the trailer were to get away, this way it would put the brakes on the trailer and then it would stop. So a whole bunch of safety systems. And the next thing is a quick check to make sure the brake lights and turn signals are working. Perfect. When a trailer sits for a few months, it can lose quite a bit of air pressure. Oh. So we want to make sure we check these tires before we hit the road. We have four tires to check here, and you want to check them every single time. In this case, uh, this was the right pressure. You want to just go ahead and make sure that that tire also is the correct pressure. Okay. Let me see what you got. All right, let me know. Yeah, they're looking good. Finally, Jack, we need to talk about load capacity. Just as the truck has a maximum tow capacity of what it can haul behind it, it also has a maximum capacity of how much it can safely carry in the bed of the truck oh. and in the cab. We want to make sure that we haven't overloaded the truck. Right. And there's another thing called tongue weight that we have to consider when we're towing. Tongue weight is the amount of weight, in this case, the boat and the trailer are putting right onto the hitch of the truck. That's usually about 10 to 15% of what you're hauling behind you. And that amount, in this case, it would be 450 pounds, counts against the payload of the truck. So that's 450 pounds of gear that you can't be bringing because you're towing this boat. Got it. Great. You know what time it is, Jack? No, what time is it? It's tow time, baby! Yes! Mike says that towing on the road seriously changes how your truck drives. Since your vehicle is hauling around a lot of additional weight, its braking power and handling are diminished. So you should drive slower, keep a wider distance between other cars, and be extra careful on turns. Mike points out one other thing you definitely don't want to forget. The trailer can significantly change your clearance. You gotta be careful of power lines, right? Low hanging branches. Right. There's a lot to think about, and the way this truck performs is gonna be a little different. Another thing to think about who will back up the truck at the marina? Luckily, Mike's co worker, Ryan Pisilkowski, hey, answers our call and agrees to meet us right. there. We're gonna see a pro at work. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Hey, you want to hop in and show us the proper way to back a boat down into the water? I'll do it for you. Okay. It's really important to have a spotter when you're backing up a trailer. Ryan can't see everything that's going on behind this boat, so we want to be here to tell him in case he's about to hit the dock. Right. So Ryan's doing a great job. He's going to back this boat down until it actually starts to float. You want to be constantly checking your mirrors. Looks good, Ryan. Did you set the parking brake? Sure did. That's pretty important. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of weight back here. We don't want the truck slipping back into the water. So now Ryan's going to set the boat up so that it can actually be launched into the water. 
Ready? Nice. Thanks, Ryan. So we got the boat in the water. Right. Now Ryan's gonna pull the truck and the trailer back out. And this is where four-wheel drive comes in pretty handy, which this truck has, because these boat launches can be pretty slippery. All of our work has paid off. Now yeah. we can take this baby out on the water. <laughs> Let's do it. Ready? Fire it up. Oh yeah. Woo! High five.